again high resource if the pph and coagulopathy combination brings more mortality more icu and the much more high tech resources which add to the infrastructure so anemia what we say that anemia is much high anemia and pph goes hand in hand and we know that even less than 500 ml of blood can cause hemodynamic instability make patient critical if the patient is having mild moderate to severe anemia it is not a one time issue it is a lifetime scar persistent anemia sepsis blood transfusion complication secondary oligomenorrhea infertility asherman syndrome and sheehan syndrome with secondary amenorrhea and as a professional we all say it is a pps patient has gone from the labor ward but she comes to the infertility clinic for so many issues which may be very very difficult to treat cost of hospital today every thing is a, it should be cost effective like this world this century is for the economics and it is shows that when the patient has pph it has got a impact on the cost it is a financial burden on public health system it is financial burden on on our patients and the families and what what is the why ayushman and all and like public health says because if there is a one illness and the patient who was in middle class socio economic status goes into the poor socio economic status because of the expenditure on the health so the key challenges may remain, remain that can we prevent this life threatening pph how we make decision making when everything is chaos and patient is suddenly bleeding and become critical care and how we can develop esteem and confidence in our our patient and our system because when we lose some patient a sudden delivery sudden pph it has got a lifelong demoralization it is such a demoralization sometimes it is a media hype and it becomes so some people say now we will not don't do obstetrics but actually we cannot escape from our crucial role and responsibility because as we have 40 to 50000 obstetrician by and large and there are around 27 million women who are delivering so we have to be armed with knowledge skill and the new armamentarium now coming to our clinical perspective it is always like a thunderbolt nobody no obstetrician want to have this call from the labor room by resident doctor or nurse madam the patient had cesarean section and now she is bleeding it is you never know where you are going it is going to take 60 minute or it is going to take your full night or two days or five days so it can occur 10 to 12% of all but what we care and the issue is that patient it is a rapid death process within one to two hours if we don't manage it well if we don't diagnose it well patient can die in a short span of 2 hours and nobody is mentally ready neither healthcare people neither family nobody is ready and that goes the backlash to our obstetrician and with the real real change in obstetrical morbidity we face new presentations and we have all old thing so all old things are with us bilaspur like you are catering to the a lot of tribal people who are poor who are not having that education and empowered women so we have all anemia delays safe delivery phase safe sound referral system these are gaps but the new challenges are with us on which the textbooks are not like speaking it is increased operative delivery placental complication due to cesarean section due to many many procedures like hysteroscopy and the like sinicia resection and the patient is getting pregnant and we are having a lot of myoma obesity comorbidity elder age patient on the anticoagulant drug they have the hereditary coagulopathy and these are the new challenges which we have to face as a clinician so first of all the things is the risk factor so we know as a obstetrician i am not going to enumerate but it is placenta previa so one thing is that whenever you are doing ultrasound be placenta minded also not only fetal minded and again multiple pregnancy and pih which is again hypertensive disorder are on the rise because of obesity because of comorbidities and the anticoagulant treatment like heparin and aspirin we are giving right and left 
and that can cause to the risk factor for the PPH. So these are the new studies which shows that the what can cause the PPH. It is right from retained placenta to episiotomy laceration and the uh, failure to uh, like late second stage. But finally, the thing is PPH is unpredictable. There may be no risk factor and patient can bleed like anything she can have moderate to severe hemorrhage and this is our labor room system and ourselves should be always prepared for the best and also for the worst tone trauma tissue thrombin all are there conventional teaching and atonicity is 70 percent and every cause has got its own risk factor we have taken a general risk factor which we can identify in antenatal period and these are the tissue trauma. These are the intrapartum related problem, like tissue retained placenta, incomplete placenta. And the, you, when you come consultant, they have thrown away placenta and we don't know what, what has happened. Like instrumental delivery, which is unfortunately it is on the low, but the difficult delivery prolonged second stage and a more, more higher number of cesarean section, which cause many, many cause of trauma and coagulopathy, what we say we are having Hereditary coagulopathy patients are getting pregnant and secondly patient are on anticoagulant drug. Tone is again muscle fatigue. Induction of labor much more, they can have the atonic PPH because patient is not responding to endogenous oxytocin. Infection, chorionic aminoacids, uterine relaxing drug. This is very important risk factor which is around intrapartum because mag magnesium sulfate, nifedipine, it is not about the vaglon, which we are not giving anymore, but it is nifedipine, it is maxel, which can cause relaxation and any patient who is on the drug can have more chances of atonic PPH as well as all multifetal pregnancy and the polyhydromyos. So this is fibroid is with us and the over distended with the IVF, we are having now much more uh, much more dealing with the multiple pregnancy and with the GD and diabetes mellitus all around us, we are having we dealing much more with the macrosomia and the polyhydromyos. So all old thing like high parity choreomyitis is with us and the new things are also like fibroid, GDM, multifetal pregnancy and the placental and cord abnormalities which are much, much more today than in the past. So atony, it is a blood uterus is not contracting and the, what nature has designed two things. First is the pregnancy is a pro-coagulant stage. So we are having all high rise of all coagulation factor. And secondly, after delivery, uterus is contracting by the crisscross machine and it is occluding blood vessels that pass between uterine muscle cells. So it was a way of nature to protect women so that they don't bleed after delivery. But when there is a defect in tone, then even the patient has no issue, no problem, no risk factor, patient can bleed heavily. And if the contraction is good, even the patient is having coagulopathy, even then patient will be like spared of the postpartum hemorrhage. Likewise, trauma, it is all handling, all like uh, handling your second stage management, tear, stitching, retained placental tissue and coagulation, which are associated with the preeclampsia, especially and the therapeutic anticoagulation. Now coming to diagnosis of PPH, what are the issue actually? Why the patient, when you are getting called by a nurse or junior resident, in the, it is already patient is having 60, 80 BP. So what have been lost, where we have lost, and these are the problem in diagnosis of PPH because there are issue in decision making. It is culture of unit, new resident batch has come, new nurses has come, and they are not able to assess it. Psychological profile, how you react to the hemorrhage, how you react to subtle sign of the initial postpartum hemorrhage and the treatment accessibility. How every drug was available, PPH box was available, what was the woman risk and how respond it is a rapid response system how rapid every nurse every uh, anesthetist senior doctor junior doctor responded to that call when the patient was able to survive in a much less intensive manner so how do you initial assessment it is 
plus blood pressure, vital sign, and ongoing blood loss. And then we see that the it is a basic teaching for every MBBS and for every PG. When the patient is bleeding, what you will do? You will put a hand on the abdomen and you see that the uterus is contracted or not, and uterus is in place or not. And at the same time, we do the complete blood count, we took instant hemoglobin estimation at that time, we can do bedside coagulation study as well, so that we know actually what is happening in the patient system. So it is a, it is a, itself a topic, but in summary, it is a what your culture in unit and how everybody is knowing that what I should see and how I should confirm the postpartum hemorrhage. And these are the challenges that one will say that it is a normal loss and one will say, no, no, it is like a PPH. Patient can have the pulse and BP change after even break to hemorrhage because nature is kind. Patient is already having the hypervolemia of pregnancy and that pulse and blood pressure does not fall to that, that early in the course of hemorrhage. And these are all challenges that we tend to underestimate or sometimes we overestimate. But I will say to all, as a teacher, Dr. Sangeeta, Dr. Kavita, as a leader, like in corporate hospital, that if somebody calls you and patient is fine, never scold him why you have called me. Don't see that it is a, like a loss of face. If they are calling you, say, because next time when the patient will be having some problem, they will be frightened to call you. So these are few things, estimation of blood loss and in Maneta program. And we just had last week uh, with the Chhattisgarh societies, uh, this uh, Maneta momentum with the CSE that how we train the nursing staff of private sector that they are trained in visible estimation. So they know that this is 300, this is 500, how they can assess the shock index that is the maternal heart rate by systolic blood pressure. Very, very simplest thing that if you have the monitor or then you, anybody says that if it is less than one, it's fine. But if it is less, more than one, then the patient is passing into shock. And the conventional rule of 30 that pulse rises, BP fall, respiratory rate rises, and urinary output drops. So one thing rise and one thing falls. So I also request that everybody join the Manita movement because it is not only the work of obstetrician, labor management is the work of team and our nurses and junior residents must be equipped with that. They are a burden with the knowledge, but they must know the clear and the sharp knowledge. And it is simply by seeing the patient, you can say that this patient is minor or this patient is having severe hemorrhage. So I will say if it is pulse, Less than 100, fine, but more than 120, 140, she is class 3 and class 4 hemorrhage. If the patient blood pressure is 80, then you see it is a moderate to severe hemorrhage and the capillary refill. So clinical acumenship is always there. B, whatever is the basic obstetrical science remains the same. And this is the pitfall that underestimation or overestimation of uh, blood loss, secondly, pulse and BP get unstable after moderate to severe hemorrhage and the patient can be hypertensive initially and she is normotensive and we tend to miss the chance and it should not be left to unknowledgeable person. And we all know that this is the first star in which if we do aggressive resuscitation, aggressive analysis of cause and manage that cause, most of the patient can be saved. And if the patient has PPH, it is all cost to either public health system or to the patient and long-term psychological scar on patient, family, and all of us. We always remember that PPH and if there is mortality, we even don't want to talk about it. So with this background, we will say today, I will focus only on the prevention of PPH. With COVID, we know, that prevention is the best thing and prevention is the best principle of medicine. So what is active management of third stage of labor? I think as a professional, we will say that everybody knows about it, yeah, but actually I'm being the part of helping mother survive program as well as the path of initiative. 
I came to know all over the country that different units have the different ways of doing active management of third stage of labor, and actually they were doing the management of fourth stage of labor. So first of all, with Jani Suraksha Yojana, we want that every work should be institutional, but in that institution, we should be ensuring that whosoever is dealing with child birth, they are able to perform active management of third stage of labor. they can diagnose postpartum hemorrhage and they can management at least initial step for the pps so it is third stage and people because everybody is focused on the fetus and newborn especially in india but actually it is after delivery of the baby then most maternal death and the collapse occurs so that third stage is the here this is the role of active management of third stage of labor and all over the world figo who foxy icm all professional body says that when we do active management of third stage of labor there is less incidence of pph less incidence of severity of pph and other measures needed for it so it is prevention of postpartum hemorrhage is one of the thing it is like vaccination against postpartum hemorrhage it may be effective 80% 60% 90% but it is a effective intervention and it should be universal in our practice now the active management which we can say it is a simple thing but actually from 1988 to till today there has been a sea change in the thought process like the old teachers will be always say what we had the answer in the mbbs when you will give methadone at the delivery of anterior shoulder and never it could be given at the delivery of anterior shoulder which we know as a person who can who is handling delivery so now the who now the professional body are taking the practical aspect so oxytocin agent within 1 minute of birth of baby and how can we do when you have that injection preloaded in the late second stage from immediate we have come to late clamping of the cord because we want to have anemia mukt bharat and we want to build blood store in our new bonds control for traction which was the initial one of the integral part of mtsl now it is control for traction only when the skilled birth attendant is available so this is very important it is not so new nurse new house surgeon new resident and they will try control cord and the you you encounter suddenly inversion this is a like a very obstetrical art which has to be learned with experience and which has to be taught by teachers so we should be careful about it and now you try massage after delivery routine you try massage is not recommended so these are the four r and i want to be very very clear message to all that this is where we are and these are all advantage and now with the late clamping of the cord it is advantage for the baby also we can have slight maternal nausea and vomiting that is very very acceptable so what was the thing oxytocin 10 unit intramuscular and when we did helping mother survive program in 2013 when dr hema devakar was president then i really initially in cesarean we always used to give because patient is in uh, like already iv fluid and iv is okay then before teaching i started using intramuscular and i saw that there was less blood pressure alteration with intramuscular you can give to each and every patient you have not to rule out any contraindication so this is very very safe drug oxytocin and ergometrine it is effective but it is five fold increase in nausea vomiting and hypertension and it is contraindicated in anemia hypertension pih cardiac disease unfortunately all the four contraindication are so much common in our obstetrical practice that there is an issue when you use methyl ergometrine with sintrosinone you can have pulmonary edema or any complication while ergometrine just after delivery of baby sometime the increased chance of retained placenta misoprostol is become a favorite of all obstetrician gynecologists it can be stored at room temperature and where why we are talking to wait for the room stable oxytocin all root misoprostol can be given it is beauty oral lingual rectal vaginal but one thing i want to say very clearly one second message what the rectal misoprostol which is so commonly given it act only after 30 to 40 minutes 
so it is not a right a very good choice for management of postpartum hemorrhage may not be acceptable to all women and vaginal route is ineffective because patient is always having the vaginal bleeding so misoprostol has come a long way first of all it is a like it is a second choice what who says when oxytocin is not available because of storage issue or because of trained birth attendant is not there to give injection then misoprostol can be given in many countries like afghanistan bangladesh they have given misoprostol to the community worker but it is a second choice next to oxytocin agent Misoprostol is also sensitive to moisture and risk of deg degradation in area of high humidity. So it is a second choice, and the third very very important that it is not that benign drug. It can have. This is a systematic review in two thousand nine that misoprostol can have unexplained adverse effect on maternal hemostatic function in third stage of labor. So suddenly. you have the sudden vitals and you should be a little cautious about very very rampant use of drug a thirdly i think in bilaspur also and all over the country there has been issue that the community worker and the ashas on etc they use misoprostol for induction or augmentation of labor and that is misuse and the more chances of uterine rupture and the fetal and maternal criticality and second issue with misoprostol that it is drug for medical abortion and in many states you have to create na all data and documentation about amount of drug so misoprostol has come a long way it is a very good drug especially in the low resource setting for the community health worker but it is a second choice it can be associated with side effect we must know that the oral or the sublingual route is faster than the rectal route and now misoprostol is considered as an essential medicine list by the who prostaglandin f12 for just i want to say that it is for management it is not for the active management of third stage of labor for by any professional body so this should be studied and used only in the management of tph late clamping 30 second to 2 minute wait so that the fetus can have the like all advantage of blood bank making blood bank in his own body and control contraction again it is a art which has to be taught and learned and never to be done by the less experienced person uterine massage is not indicated for amt as an active management but watch on uterine tone for 2 hours after delivery is mandatory because when you do in all then there is one person needed for it it can be nausea vomiting so there has been found no effect on the incidence or the severity of pps yeah, just we have to watch on the uterine tone these are the challenges that uh, please uh, manoj like mute everybody so amtsl these are the four arm and the oxytocin agent is the strongest arm but all over the world not only in india they say that the policies are different in different unit in the same hospital even so we have evidence and guideline but it needs to be practiced that is important and i was part of this study that is path oxytocin initiative and in 13 we really made from the part of foxy when the in when i was chair person of safe motherhood committee for a drive that oxytocin to be kept in refrigerator and at that time around 90% of the places oxytocin was kept just in shelf even in a mid summer heat of summer and 46 to 74% of oxytocin failed to have the quality test quantity test and you see how important it is patient is having pph we are relying on 40 to 60 unit of oxytocin and that has not got efficacy not quality and patient is not responding and it is key drug to manage pph and how important this was issue and i am really proud and privileged to be part of this study and the path oxytocin initiative where we did a pan india workshop and the things really changed from 13 to 20 when the people know that oxytocin to be kept in fridge we also recommended there should be refrigerated close to labor room and a situation little bit improved then again jpago which says that even in a delhi hospital 
the most of the people says that we give methargine after delivery of placenta. So if we're managing fourth stage of labor, and this is Maneta Momentum, for which we had just one week before with the Raipur Society and with Chhattisgarh Society, this movement. So oxytocin agent remains the mainstay, and till now it was only 10 unit oxytocin, well kept in cold chain or IV infusion. Golden R we have to see for the placenta always and always to see the tissue cause of the uh, postpartum hemorrhage. These are all recommendations, all voices for women health says do active management of third stage of labor, give oxytocin within one minute of delivery of baby. And these are many, many workshops which have done. Now coming, this is a photograph which I've taken from a stall of women deliver conference. And this says, I know knowledge, but what drugs are available with me? What is stock in and what is stock out? That gives strength to my work. That gives my validity to be there as a doctor. And the crown issue is that oxytocin loses potency and it has to kept either room temperature 25 degree or lower or in the refrigeration. In a tropical country like us, as we know, when there was no issue like vaccine, their government is strict, but for oxytocin, for maternal health, we were not that careful about it. And that comes the invention and the journey of long acting as well as heat stable oxytocin analog. It was a long wait for women across the world, especially in India and South Asia. These are all drugs. We are so familiar about it and everybody, every drug has got its own contraindication and indication. And oxytocin is beautiful drug. It is a natural drug which is produced. Oxytocin hormone is produced endogenously in women's system and there is no contraindication for oxytocin use. Ergometrin, we know anemia, PIH, carboprost, it is the asthma, it is renal hepatic or cardiac disease. But the issue is that we have to keep in a good condition and with 27 million deliveries, women delivering in PSC, women delivering in public health sector, women deliveries in many, many different settings. And there is issue of supply of chain and it has been like documented with the research, with the survey that from production to the your patient in labor room, there is a threat to quality. And we were really waiting for this carbitocin, which we were listening about it since around five or six years ago. So a carbitocin journey, we know as a doctor, we say that, uh, yes, uh, pharma people are with us and uh, like they are with us. But you see, every journey has got so much of effort from all parts of the people and all section of people. It was first described in 1974 and first used for medically in 1997. Now, it still it is not available in many countries and mind it, USA and Japan are country where still it is not available. So what is a beauty about carbidocin? It is oxytocin like oxytocin, anti-hemorrhagic and eutrotonic drug. It acts as a peripheral oxytocin receptor, particularly in myometrium. And it has got the equal affinity. All oxytocin receptors have the same affinity for oxytocin and carbitocin, but it has got much longer lasting effect. So it is necessitized only one single dose. Secondly, it so influentially binds to oxytocin receptor that with the negative system, it like it decreases the central and peripheral release of oxytocin. During pregnancy, synthesis of oxytocin receptor in uterus gradually increased and peaked at the term and the labor. Minded carbitocin does not affect non-pregnant uterus because there are no oxytocin receptor expression and it also functions to thicken the blood. So there is further added for the prevention of postpartum hemorrhage. So a history for carbitocin, fairing was of one first a company which initiated carbitocin and like in, uh, introduced into the private sector. But it was Mr. Rao from Merck for Mothers who really had the, that passion and drive 
to make one drug available for all women, especially in the tropical countries. And the lot of negotiation between M4 and that is for mothers faring and WHO. And after a long initiative, there was a tri-party initiative taken by WHO for a neutral trial across the world. And this agreement was signed and the champion trial finally came into the way which enrolled around 30,000 women across 10 countries that whether this heat stable log acting carbitocin is effective in prevention of PPH or not. And this came out, it has got a, some important highlight that the short oxytocin has a short half life, it has got the long life. Oxytocin, we always need to give four to eight hours to 16 hours. And we all have the thing that patient can have hypotension, nausea, and what worries us, that is oliguria after the delivery, and that we don't know that what is happening with the urinary symptom. And we also get the cardiac change. So room temperature stable carbitocin has got some inexpedient expedient so that it increases the stability and it can survive day one and a half to two years of the stability at 30 degrees centigrade and 75 percent humidity and it is in a vial. So the oxytocin have half-life of seven minutes but the heat stable carbitocin has half-life of 33 to 50 minutes. It has a long duration of action and only single dose that is 100 microgram IV slowly in one minute or intramuscular and it is heat stable. This is about carbitocin trial and it is Indian trial. And many times the Indian, we Indians have having a some block of confidence that Indian trials are not good. But you know, this history I have taken from so many things and Indian people were so like so meticulous about this trial that they didn't identify the facility from one place all over the country from public and private facility. They made their own WhatsApp group. They gave the idea to have the top open refrigerator for control with the oxytocin. And it took with the thing, champion trial in India is over and it shows that it reduces PPH, it reduces severity of PPH and it reduces use of additional carbitocin. So this is the champion trial, which are very proudly, it has been accomplished with great meticulousness all over the globe with the WHO uh, as a neutral observation. And there is a less, it is as effective as a oxytocin, which is kept adequately into the refrigerator. And if we have the not that quality control oxytocin, not in that cold chain setting, we can say that the heat stable carbitocin will be much, much better working in the field and in our hospital as compared to oxytocin. So this is a just to emphasize that the short, longer half-life single dose immediately effective. It is one to two minute, it is effective and very, very strong affinity to oxytocin receptor. And elimination half-life is around 40 to 50 minutes. So this is just to emphasize and the prolonged action. This is very, very important that one dose of carbitocin is equal to 16 hours of the oxytocin infusion. And most of the studies till now, now we will have studies in vaginal delivery also, but in cesarean section, many, many studies have done and it is a very, very good because cesarean section, we have a controlled environment. So we have studied more, but we will going to have studies on the vaginal delivery also. So oxytocin, what we say, multiple dose, antidiabetic effect, stability and quality issue. Vaginal delivery also we can, it has been recommended by many bodies that we can use as a preventive measure as well as the management of the postpartum hemorrhage. Just a word about contraindication, never, never give before delivery. Very, very important oxytocin remains the drug of choice for the induction of labor. Carbitocin is not to be used for induction or augmentation of labor. And be careful still with the carbitocin patient with cardiovascular disease, coronary artery disease, valvular heart disease, cardiomyopathy, and heart failure. So we have to be very, very cautious till we have more experience about it. There is no drug interaction with carbitocin. 
it enhances effect of other eutrotonic like pgf2 alpha the halothane and aesthetic like halothane etc can in like enhance a hypotensive effect because it weaken the effect of carbitocin on uterus and if you give oxytocin and carbitocin both after delivery then the there are arrhythmias have been reported so one way if you have given one dose of carbitocin then don't use oxytocin for management of pph use other drugs so this is very important side effect also we must be aware of it we can the very very mild and trivial side effect that is a little headache anxiety a little hypotension not as compared to oxytocin a little tachycardia some patient can have to write this and a little nausea and vomiting sensation so these are few side effect and few contraindication and we must know that how we should use the drug with the proper use so we can have a confidence on the safety of the safety as well as efficacy of carbidocin uh, carbidocin and the long acting carbidocin these are many studies actually which has been done in last 3 to 5 years especially after champion trial and this is 2018 and which says that carbidocin is better than oxytocin in management of third stage of labor to prevent pph it says that in treatment of the postpartum hemorrhage it is as effective as oxytocin infusion and it is a women with are having risk factor for the pph so women with risk factor of pph carbidocin might be a better choice choice for the prevention of pph this is again a taiwanese journal and it says the efficacy and it says that it is like equally effective it, it is either non inferior or it is superior to oxytocin because there is less need of additional eutrotonic and reduce the requirement of blood transfusion so there are different group in which the carbidocin or a long acting heat stable carbidocin has been studied and this is a very important cochrane review which include 11 randomized control trials and it shows that how it is effective and outcome one it reduces postpartum hemorrhage outcome two it less in need of additional eutrotonic therapy like methyl ergometrine or prostaglandin f2 alpha and outcome three that is less need of blood transfusion so you can see it is same or it might be superior to the oxytocin women with high risk of postpartum hemorrhage with cesarean like women with fibroid multi fetal pregnancy and it shows that the single injection of carbidocin is more effective than continuous infusion of oxytocin to prevent pph with the similar hemodynamic profile and minor anti diuretic effect so this conclusion is very very important same efficacy but patient is more stable and patient is having less no anti diuretic effect this is again non elective emergency as well as elective cesarean delivery in both ways carbidocin has been found useful and why i am saying it is very very like a crucial drug for elective cesarean because patient is not having the endogenous oxygen oxytocin so this is a crucial drug in the cesarean section for the prevention of postpartum hemorrhage and again it need the in high risk patient additional eutrotonic or less twin pregnancy again a risk factor and it has been found very very effective so there are many robust large patient studies which have shown that the carbidocin is non inferior or sometimes superior in pph prevention pph severity as well as the complication like the blood transfusion and other nic icu issue so these are the summary of all the studies which i have shared that it reduces need of additional eutrotonic it reduces need of blood transfusion and the icu care so room temperature stable carbidocin long acting has got all the issue long acting single injection effective less affinity to vasopressin b2 receptor so no no anti diuretic effect stable at room temperature very very important in our country and they are guidelines at economics today like everybody question us that how economical is our system is and figo sogc 
Many professional bodies say that the carbitocin should be used as a choice for the active management of third stage of labor. SOGC recommended that it should be given and in the vaginal delivery, if cost permit, then we should use the carbitocin, heat stable carbitocin is particularly in tropical country. WHO says it is a life saving drug. And this is again prophylaxis option as well as the treatment option. WHO in 2015 made carbitocin in the list of essential medicine and his stable carbitocin has got its own issue because we are not worried about it that the, it is effective or not effective and medical store people what they have done. So it is a joint statement of EGO and ICM that heat stable carbitocin does not require refrigeration so eliminate that cost and it might be it may be cost, like a little costly as compared to oxytocin initially but in the long run it is a cost effective drug and the pharmacoeconomics will be good with the use of heat stable carbitocin so this is all data again it says that it is more cost effective in prevention of kph so what does it mean for policy making as a professional, like even carbitocin, when it was initially used, it was introduced in private setting. In public health setting, what to my current understanding that the people are providing at a less rate to public health facility carbitocin also. And in vaginal delivery, because there are more vaginal delivery, still, still it is 85% of women delivering vaginally. Carbitocin can be in a long run a cost effective issue cost effective management for prevention of PPH. And it is the registry and I will say to all Bilaspur, we are having Dr. Shyama, Dr. Nilesh and Dr. Sangeeta, Dr. Kavita, who are always a research minded people. And this is registry, which is like it is in the in the, in the, the different country. And there are a lot of registry, which is double blind non inferiority trial as well as the superiority trial. And when we are having so much of like a obstetrical practice and the load, we can contribute to many such trials and say with confidence that how this drug has got experience because world is looking at us for our experience. And we should be very, very confident that we can provide a good research, a good sharing of experience across the country and we can contribute for saving mothers. So postpartum hemorrhage is still it remains the leading cause of maternal mortality. There is no silver bullet, but active management of third stage of labor is the important thing with one arm important that is oxytocin agent. And when we have got the heat stable log acting oxytocin, it is added to our armamentarium. So this is the words of Mr. Rao that what we are doing in the countries on the drug ground is not about a drug which is long acting, short acting, heat stable, heat level. It is about saving lives of mothers. And we were creating a movement to seek quality product at the mother's bedside so that people understand what the opportunities are for the patient and mothers. And as an obstetrician, as a professional organization, we can provide these opportunities for life and health to our people. So many milestones I had I always, again, gratitude for being together, gratitude for being here. And I sincerely request for my presidential candidature election, your vote and support. And this is all my candidature is all about inclusiveness and involvement. It is a 30 years when we have been involving every person from like every part of the country, the teachers, mentors, juniors, youngs, and this should be my version that our professional body should be representative of, should be have the respectful place and respectful voice and the loud voice for the health of the women of the people. Thank you once again for the patient listening and the opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it was a very nice presentation. And uh, this problem, I know all the physicians are facing once or other time. But uh, as you have told very nicely, and with the new utrotonics, we want the maternal mortality should be minimum. Uh, I request uh, <coughs> President Jogi ma'am, she will uh, say a few words because many seniors are there. They will definitely put their own 
experiences and which will be knowledgeable for all of us jogi ma'am please yeah good afternoon everybody dr sanana sadhana ma'am nice very nice presentation and uh, we have carbitocin at our medical college and we are using it in a not in all cases but yeah we presume that it, it may be a cause for this patient may land into ppa so we are using in that cases also and it's a really a very effective and excellent drug uh, maybe more uh, practical should be uh, on this drug is needed uh, i saw that name of dr nitish is also in our list so dr dalal if you put something more add in this so it will be we will yeah yes here he is uh, dr nitish welcome dr uh, sadhna gupta dr uh, jogi lavita and all and uh, specifically we did a lot of trial on oxytocin with mesoprostol as you rightly said that miso has to be used with caution and uh, it is being misused for induction of abortion and all we get so many complications every day we are getting in in the medical college with a lot of average and medical doctors and nurses also carbitocin basically should be reserved for gynecologists that point is well taken mm -hmm. and it is having its efficacy in room stability that was the point which has been focused and they are using it for specific cases and definitely your point taken is your alarm and call for help whenever tps is there i always tell my post graduates and my lecturers and faculty that you call for help because a single person is not able to even if you diagnose it you can't manage it is putting an eye on the diagnosing the tps the amount of blood loss like you rightly said the scoring and making the patient stable and then proper use of the drug will come a long way in prevention of maternal death every vc we are having on uh, sadhana you will believe on wednesday and our question from the commissioner medical education is why we are not able to uh, decrease the ph and all we have decreased uh, complications of eclampsia and maternal mortality but we are not yet able to break i should say that uh, for ph like we should have that will be a joint effort by all of us at foxy and with pharma companies like sun and all coming a long way in preventing maternal death due to this cause thank you and a very wonderful informative talk by you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you a uh, one thing from uh, sun people we will want to say dr sagita says that we are you are giving in select patient and i one actually in certain educational program says that to public sector they are providing at around 89 rupees or 80 rupees so uh, you want input at uh, madam sangeeta uh, and dr nilesh also and from sun pharma also that that it should be available to all at a low cost so uh, any yeah, yeah. From, yes that should yeah. be there. that should be the actually it is costing 350 rupees or something or another uh, company is having 450 rupees each vial so it's quite quite costly for a every person having patient so yeah we have uh, in by local purchase it is in our medical college and uh, some company provide me personally for 10 to 12 vials also but that's not for all the all the ladies so yeah we are requesting all uh, sun pharma and other companies who have this injection they should provide it in a very low cost at least around 50 to 100 rupees so it is good for everybody any other seniors if they are here they can put their any question from anyone sarita i am seeing sarita she is from aims dr meena is there yes meena is there meena is also there meena your input hello 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 meena ma'am hello ma'am good afternoon actually i am sitting in railway station waiting for train so thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you dalal sir you are any input and experience about this carbitocin use so dr usha you want to add something more dr usha shinde please and i'll mute yourself unmute yourself i have used in 10 15 cases only and uh, eclampsia and uh, twin pregnancy and uh, th cases only so it is really wonderful really wonderful 
Mm. It is very good. Shama, also, I would like to have your experience because in cesarean, when like initially we all are hesitant in using any drug, but it is not just you give carbitocin and next minute you see placenta delivering yes. out and uterus remains yeah. contracted. So it is something what uh, Dr. Shardajan says, just it is a treat to see. So yeah, uh, it's yeah. like it a wonder drug. It's like a wonder drug. What I feel yeah. is like thank a wonder you, drug. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Sadhguru. Especially in the election for the wonderful section. talk. Yeah. There is yeah. no doubt the drug is definitely very good. And as a prophylactic, <laughs> definitely, uh, like in the as a management of third stage of labor, definitely it is very good. And the effect lasts for a longer period as compared to oxytocin. As we know, only thing is that in a government setup, there is a availability. Because uh, as a um, small pilot study we have done, uh, as I heard someone also telling the, when the pharma company has provided, they use as a study purpose. And we also see that, that the, we saw that the um, definitely the uh, effect is was that is now it is not market is available in the market also but i can say that the effect is definitely better mm. and it's good there's no doubt but the only thing is that the availability if it comes at the government setup especially the people who are working in the government setup like we people really and the nice most it. of the drugs are coming under the gssk we cannot ask to buy the patient buy the patient so in that situation we are pl uh, planning to our um, this government, um, uh, our uh, university uh, uh, for the supply. If it comes into the supply, definitely for the patient purpose, it is quite beneficial. There is no doubt. So I also agree with this. Your and you have covered very well all aspects. Thank you so much, and my best wishes to you. You. Savita, you are in corporate sector to my best of knowledge. So what's your, like I'm using because in private sector. So Savita, like your patient can afford and three, 400 is not 4,000 actually. <laughs> it is yeah. 400 only. So what's 400. your experience? <laughs> now the cost has come down. I think I last uh, two days back, one of the company came, said it's only 350 rupees. So ah, I think yeah. people can afford easily. There's no... Slowly when their competitors will come, yes, the price... In the, it's life-saving. Life-saving, it can be used. And yes. with competition, definitely the price. And one more suggestion, like doctor said just now, it is the National Health Mission, Sadhana. We are having mm -hmm. all these drugs available to medical college. And they are doing wonderful job by even providing FCM, which is so expensive. Mm -hmm. We are getting FCM to a medical college and we are treating patients yeah. of anemia. So this can be easily put onto the list of purchase and we can then have the budget for it. If it can I be done by the we, we have a patient. advocacy for it, like a professional body advocacy, then government will also listen yes, to us. They it will is all accept. about saving because yes. now people are like thinking for women, and women empowerment, women yes. in place. Yes, so, so, <laughs> so uh, we and they are answerable, yes. Yes. And they yes. <laughs> so nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, madam. Very good afternoon, Dr. Hello, Sarita. Sarita. Oh, yeah. I was looking for your comment, Sarita. I was saying that Sarita is also there. I was yeah. not, then I yeah, didn't find your video. Sarita, oh, Sarita. oh, Namaskar, Dr. Sarita. Sarita. <laughs> Namaskar. How are you? I know no one else. Hi, Sarita. Hi, Kavita. Hi. Very nice to see you. It's a wonderful Hello, program. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Absolutely fine. Yeah, I was remembering Sarta brought Sarta called me to Bilaspur and we have all the journey from the train and everything. So, ha, Sarita, your comment about carbidosis, yes. your experience. Yeah, actually, I know no one else could have explained the way you explained explain what exactly the AMTSL should be there. And at the end, whatever you're using, it is a empty asset to prevent the PPH. See, you should not let it to happen. That should be a good obstetrician what they should do. So no one else could have explained the way about you had the different trials and the role of Indian on this trial and the champion trials conclusions and all. I just want to mention if you, I was just looking at the literature just a few days ago, and then if you find the efficacy wise in preventing the PPH, 
Oxytocin, 10% of the women are likely to develop PPS even after use of oxytocin within one minute. And if you look for the symptometry, which was an initially recommended in the Holland Jews book, you know, that is the most efficacious till now also the risk of developing women PPS is even 7%. And of course, in between, you have the carbatosin and the other drugs. Uh, but my personal experience, if I look into the market, why methargin, has, when we are talking about the active management of labor, it was third stage, it was the methyl ergometry, which was initially introduced. If you look at why methyl ergometry has been withdrawn from the market, the reason for that, the people were misusing this methyl ergometry for induction of labor, or even for the second stage of the labor, but when the baby was hanged on, they are just trying to push the uterus and it will be delivered. And the risk of rupture uterus were quite high with the use of methyl ergometry. Therefore, the methyl ergometry has been withdrawn for the public sector and we have shifted to MTSL with the oxytocin. Now, when you talk about the carbidocin, definitely, definitely, as for the safety profile, it is really very good. But only for prevention of postpartum hemorrhage, it is very important. It is not for treatment of postpartum hemorrhage. So, and if you have used the carbatosin, yeah. you cannot use the oxytocin for prevention of postpartum hemorrhage. Then you are left over with the postaglandin and methyl argumentin. So, if I talk about the public sector, you know, carbatosin, it is not only the cost. But other things, it cannot be used for uh, induction of labor and people will start using it. And if you can, you cannot use oxytocin after the carbatocin, you need prostaglandins. Would you be having the more prostaglandins available in the public sector? Would you like to provide methyl argumentary in the public sector? These are the all the questions. Even I being in the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, where all whatever I ask, I'll definitely get it. But I'm not a very great promoter. For all cases, of course, in high risk cases, you can use it like in a PIH, like in a previous season section, like in a placenta previa, like in a brachio placenta. All these cases, you can use carbatosin, but universally, if you ask me, I won't recommend that the carbatosin should be universally used for all these sectors. So, that is my personal opinion. I'm not going with any pharma company, I'm not going with anyone, but. Tell me now, whatever the available research it says, and it is my mindset with this, madam. But actually, you open all the windows that the women, the all the obstetrician can individualize where they want to use what, rather than just tucking up one place. Hey, my view is that the message at this platform message should be clear that carbitocin can be used as a management of third stage of labor, or you can say use the is a prophylactic, like for the prophylactic of PPS, the W has recommended the active management of the third stage of labor, means before occurring the PPS. So the carbitocin is not good for the management of the PPS, but definitely it is helpful for the preventing. So it should message should be like that. And second thing, whenever it is available, definitely it should be the first choice. I have just seen a um, WHO recommendation which has come currently, although the oxytocin is still, it is the first choice. About the Dr. Sarita's concern about, uh, regarding the methargin uh, or ergometrin, as the ergometrin we know that in the periphery, most of the delivery is conducted by AM, ASHAs, and ASHA and uh, nurses at the periphery. In that condition, if they don't know about the blood pressure status, definitely the ergometrin is a harmful drug. So that's why it is not considered as a as, as excluded from the management of the third stage of labor as when we were resident, we used to uh, read as the uh, ergometry should be given with the anterior shoulder of the delivery of the baby, if you remember. But because of these complications, it has been excluded. I will uh, respond to Sarita's symptometry. Actually, what the study shows the combination of two drugs, what has been found effective, what Sarita says very rightly, oxytocin plus methargin, that is symptometry. And second is oxytocin with misoprostol. As a single drug, a carbitocin is taking upper hand. And Shama, I will just like to say, it is for prevention of PPH as well as in management of PPH. 
but actually once you use carbitocin then oxytocin has got no place what you say sarita and chama both says that because it like na like fills all the oxytocin receptor so it is not going to work and now we other eutrotonic what i also said repeatedly that it is other eutrotonic like with the allergometrin prestagnin f2 alpha misoprostol it is not the repeat oxytocin so this is a one thing and it was a news that methyl ergometrin is not available in public sector it, i was not, really not aware of it because it still it is very good drug for still lower segment relaxation and everything shama in K, your college also methyl ergometrin is not available in uh, no no it is it is a news ha yeah, because yeah, sarita yeah, says yeah. it is not available because Maybe it is not no, available no, but it is not available is not being promoted for that yes, yes it I is agree. available but now I the agree. thing we got amt is not going to nobody promote nobody promote now who figo foxy nobody promote methyl ergometrin as active management of third stage of labor that's an agree man i'm not yes, telling it should not ah, be but i'm telling ah, for the active management see. replacing carbitocin in place of oxytocin you know we can be talking about that i am just talking about that for mts mm. and drawing the oxytocin and taking a carbitocin yes. that will not be a good choice that's what i'm talking about okay thank so you very nice like good it is was a real real good sharing from dr sanita dr kavita sarita and shyama and dr nilesh so we come to know so many things what is happening in our country and Uh, let's i think sarita shama aap log dr nilesh sangeet kavita we can have a lot of like in 6 month to 9 month we can have all data about it for these na diverse experiences because uh, to me i have found it very very good drug actually yeah, I, i found it a really very good drug i say its weight is over <laughs> so kavita you can conclude if you think that it we have done and dr sangeeta parvez one last comment from president and secretary thank you dear thank i want to first of all thank you ma'am for giving us uh, your valuable time and enlightening us on this important topic and uh, we feel uh, you now everybody is very much clear when to use how to use because it was a novel drug so everybody had a little bit doubts with your uh, guidance i think now everybody is very much clear uh thank you so much ma'am and from bilaspur option gynec society i would i would also like to uh, give you best wishes for your upcoming election <laughs> all our best wishes are with you, you. <laughs> even you. my my guide dr gangadhar sahu sir he also <laughs> talked <laughs> and that day uh, two three days back he told ma'am is contesting and uh, it's so nice that she'll be uh, if we could uh, promote you as a president so it's a honor for all of us so i would like to definitely ma'am give you. our best wishes thank, thank you, you. So thank you yogi okay. ma'am please you want to say something unmute unmute yogi madam please unmute I think, uh, ma'am. Thank yes, you so ma much, everyone. I just want to thank everyone, Dr. Sadhana, Dr. Dalal, Dr. Shama, and Dr. Sarita, and everyone who are attended this conference. And uh, my best wishes to you, ma'am. All the best. Thank you. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, ma'am.